Richter's Adventures in Paradise. Starring Gardner McKay as Adam Troy. Safari at Sea. Guest stars, Diana Lynn. John Erickson. Charter? Adam! We're at the Hotel du Jour! Come by at eight! Thirsty! I'll be there! Like the man said, we expect a little more from the class of 54. I was really surprised to hear from you, Jeff. Well, come on in and fall down someplace. Whiskey? Yeah. On the rocks? Yep. Good. Who'd have thunk it, huh? Yeah, who'd have thunk it? You remember that chubby fella back in school, the guy who wanted to be a writer? What, always chewing on his neckties? That's the one. He said you'd never get anywhere. And he got that Hollywood contract, he did a flip, and he said he knew it all along. I got news for you, he's still chewing on his ties. You've seen them? Yeah, I produced my last picture. I caught one of your films in Hong Kong not long ago. You were good, Jeff, really good. Thanks. Hello, Captain Troy. Adam, I'd like you to meet my wife. Nick. Nick? Yeah, uh, Nick, it's uh, really Nicole. You're quite a yachtsman. Oh, you should see us in a sports car. Say, that's uh, quite a watch. Yes, isn't it? It belonged to my father. Jeff, I got a kick out of your cable. What brings you out here? Skin diving. We heard about a fantastic fish called the, uh... The Morella. Oh, the Morella's a giant eel. Pretty rough customer. Yes, I know. Well, here's to a new adventure. And, uh, to an old friendship, eh, Adam? Mrs. Hazen, have you and Jeff ever have done any diving before? Yes, in California. Down around Laguna. The Morella's a little different than anything you might have come up against. He's got these strong front teeth that hook backwards. When he grabs a hold, nothing gets away. Well, it sounds familiar, doesn't it, Jeff? The lions had big teeth, too. So they did. I read all about your safari somewhere. Lions. You can keep them in six points. Oh, I don't know. Your eel sounds excitingly dangerous. Well, maybe too dangerous. 
Look, Captain Troy, if you're trying to say that you don't want to take us out, I'm sure we can find a boat that will. Now, wait a minute, Dick. Look, that isn't what Adam meant at all. That's not what he meant. All right. If that's what you both want, all right. What about diving gear? We brought it with us. Good. I'll uh, have it picked up and brought aboard. I'll see about supplies for the cruise. Say, why don't I take you both to dinner later on? Jeff might not feel like it. Let's plan on starting about 10.30 tomorrow morning. I'll expect you both on board no later than 4 in the morning. Come on, old buddy, this is a vacation. Whatever my captain says. Good. I'll check with you later, just in case you change your mind about having dinner with me. We both decline with thanks. See you, Captain Troy. ship's lawyer. Takes care of all our deals. Pleased to know you, Mrs. Hazen. If you'll excuse me, I'll finish stowing the gear. Good night. Very nice. Do you serve drinks aboard? We never really had that first one. Is Jeff meeting you here? You make quite a point of that, don't you? At the hotel, you kept talking about both of us and all of us. But I think it's a pretty good point. Well, Jeff is where he usually is about this time every night. Passed out. Is the dinner invitation still open? Yes. To both of them. You've said that word again. I like your boat. I like everything about it. I better take you back to the hotel. You're such a stern man. That pleases me. Look, Mrs. Hazen. Let's make it Nick and Adam. All right, we're getting an early start before dawn, and I think we'd better... I'm doing my best to get that early start, Adam. Stop pacing around. You look like a nervous tiger. I suppose you've hunted them, too. No, but my father did. We had the head of one mounted in our library. He used to tell me how he'd shot it. I never got tired of that story. The Morella isn't as subtle or as beautiful as a tiger. He's as deadly and as vicious as a big snake. I think that's what makes him more dangerous. Things that strike blindly often do a lot more damage. Why do you say things when you really mean people? I'm taking you back to the hotel. I'm quite used to finding my own way. As you wish. Stern and staunch, and loyal, too. I like that. You know, this reunion, it's not working out as I had hoped. We used to be, uh, well, close friends, Adam. Now we seem to be like, well, like strangers, don't we? Maybe later on we'll discover the old friendship. Good enough for me. You don't think she'll give up, do you? No, she's just a little tired, that's all. One of these days, we should trade her in. What kind of a woman are you boys trading in, and what kind of a model are you getting? We're talking about a temperamental lady that serves as our engine. I 
feel marvelous. We're sailing up on that island fast. You'll be able to break out your diving gear soon. I'm eager to do that. Aren't you going to change? I'm eager to do that, too. <laughs> I'm going to hunt Morella now without an argument. Hold this for me, Adam. OK, I'll give it to Oliver. He'll watch it while we're down. Yeah, she'd be naked without it. I thought his initials are on the back. His name was Nick, too. They could care this for Mrs. Hazen. Right. And I'd get rid of that scarf. Well, that's kind of a tradition in our family. We always wear a scarf when we go hunting. It's a little bit like cowboys and Indians. Kind of silly, but rather fun. Just the same. I'd get rid of it. Stern and staunch, brave and loyal, but don't be unreasonable, too. That's the yellow kerchief. The Morella is attracted to them. Sometimes the natives catch them by wrapping yellow cloth around their arms. The Morella sees this. He bites into the cloth and he hooks himself with those teeth that curve back. Well, that's all the more reason to wear it. Now, don't argue with me, Adam.
particularly well on the library wall. You got the Morella? You never fired your spear. You never made a move to help me. I wasn't anywhere near them. You were near enough. Why didn't you shoot? I tried to. Adam was faster. And braver. Wait a minute, Nick. I'm used to this kind of fishing. Why did you freeze, Jeff? Why? I didn't freeze. Why this time? You never froze any of the other times. You got your lion in Africa. I need you. That's it, isn't it? You've been scared all along, and you've only done this because I've shamed you. Oh, my Don't turn your back on me. I'm tired of looking at it. You're just what I thought you were, Jeff. You're a coward. You're a coward. Oh, I am not. Unless you want me dead. Is that what you wanted, Jeff? Did you want me to die down there? Do you want to get rid of me? Oh, no. I just... Stronger, Jeff. Put some conviction into it. Come on, deny it, will you? You're a coward about that, too. Back to Papa Ede. We better spend the night there. I don't know what I thought down there when that Morella. Could you be right? Did I want her dead? Go ahead. Don't let me stop him. Oh, I'd uh, like to buy you a drink. I already have one. Oh. But why don't you stay with me when I drink it? Oh, no, no, I'd like that. Look. Okay? Okay. They're leaving. I rather thought they would. And you? Maybe uh, we should go someplace else, huh? I live close by. Oh, that's fine. Finish your drink. Oh. Look, uh, I I'm very sorry. Well, let's make it another time, okay? Okay. Lovely night. 
Is it? And you are such an angry young man. And you're not even British. He was begging you tonight. He was pleading with you. And you kicked him over to that girl at the bar. I can't get mad at you, Adam, because you mean so well. Even if you are completely wrong. What are you doing to Jeff? He was such a different guy when I knew him. He was different when I married him. At least I thought he was. He was a young knight, riding up a steep hill wearing shining armor. Knights in armor look pretty silly nowadays. Don't disillusion me, Adam. What really went wrong between you two? I don't know. We were fine until a couple of years ago. And then my father died. He was quite a guy, Adam. He was kind and gentle. But he knew how to be ruthless and fearless. No comprende. Yourself? Only his pride. You're home early. Do you mind? Huh? <laughs> Not at all. Good night, gentlemen. The innocent always look so guilty. That goes for both of us. You better sober up. What do you mean, sober up? I know what's going on. That girl tonight. He's beautiful. Only wasn't Nick. They never are. Nothing, big nothing. Keep your hands off, Captain Troy, off the radio. And off the passengers, off everything. You better listen to me. Man, I'm I'm here and it's coming in loud and clear. We're gonna settle this. What is this? Omega Porega, upside down, bula bula, get in there and you know what. I'm gonna drink this town so dry, they're gonna think provision sit in. What about tomorrow? Tomorrow? Tomorrow, I'm gonna have a hangover. You know what I mean. Nick is the cause and the effect, don't you know that? I'm just living in the wrong century, back where witchcraft was a going business. She uh, cast a spell over me. Let me put those bars out of business. I think you better hit the sack. <laughs> what are you trying to do, keep me here? If I have to. <laughs> You wanted to say something, you got a captive audience. I did the listening tonight. You and Nick did the talking. About knights and shining armor and witchcraft and magic spells. 
You didn't act this way when we were friends, Jeff. Oh, we're not friends anymore? Hmm? You just aren't the same guy. What do you mean I'm not the same guy? Well, I guess I'm not. You had all the guts a guy could use. <laughs> Those were good days. I didn't know how to fight then. But I don't anymore. No, I don't. You know, things got twisted. I had a perfect life. All of a sudden, it's not perfect anymore. Uh, why? Uh, wh where did things go wrong? Things don't go wrong, Jeff. People do. How long do you figure a man and a woman can go on like this? Slashing away at each other, cutting each other to ribbons. You better grow up or somebody else will be picking up your pieces. Are we gonna sail early tomorrow? Yeah. Well, you, you better drop anchor somewhere near Morella, because I'm gonna kill it. Or it's gonna kill me. None. Adventures in Paradise will continue following station identification. And now, back to Adventures in Paradise. Good morning. Still the angry young man? Nope. Where are we headed? Pop Island. Should be there in a couple of hours. What's the secret? I was thinking about us last night. You must have found me pretty amusing last night. May I say something? Why not? You see way out there? I can't make it out. Exactly. Can't make it out from here, but when we get closer, you'll see it's an island. I can't say that's vastly interesting. I think it is. Islands and people, Nick, you've got to get close to them to see them as they really are. You know, I really prefer you as an angry young man. Mm -hmm. Don't bother. If you were more observant, you would notice that girls are not wearing bathing suits under their shirts this year. Keep it on. You're not diving today. They must have spiked your drink last night. That's it, Nick. You're not going in the water. Only I do. That's not very funny, Jeff. Look, don't complain. I've given you a few laughs. Let her out. Let her out. Tie her off at five fathoms. That's good. We're here. This is it. Hang on, I'm gonna change. You're not diving, Adam. Now, wait a minute. You're not diving. Neither is Nick. I'm going down alone. Jeff, even the natives don't go after the Morella alone. They know the yield. It attacks without warning. I think he wants to kill himself. I think he wants to live. But I told you, you're not diving, Adam. You can go down alone. You can't tell me what to wear on my own boat. You're right.
think you're better. Do you think that Morello weighed, huh? At least 40 pounds. Man, he was full of fight. He just wouldn't give up. Hey, I know I, uh, I booked your boat for a week, but this charter's gonna be over when we reach Papiti. Forget it. And I'm gonna pay you for a full week. I don't want any arguments out of you. I said forget it. Oh. You got a chill? <sighs> yeah, I'm okay. Look, I want you to get in your bunk. You've lost a lot of blood. I'm okay. Old soldiers and actors, you know that bit. Thanks anyway. Gotta get in your cabin, keep an eye on them. The chills have started, the fever's next. Adam told me to take care of you. I didn't tell him I'd do it all the time. Stop it, Nick. Would you rather be alone? Yes, I think I would. Way along. What picture's that line from? Look, Nick, I'll never be what you want me to be. I'm through trying. I just can't make it. For once we agree. <laughs> this is the day, isn't it, when we finally agree. Well, it's a big day for me, too. Because I finally bought my freedom. Well, listen to the man talk. Go on, Jeff. You fascinate me. There isn't much more. I love you, Nick. But not on your terms. You keep driving me to be something I can't be. I only wanted you to be a man. A man? I don't know what that word means to you. All I can ever be is me. That's what I learned down there today. I'm not the hero type. And you want to know something? I don't want to be. All I ever want to be is just myself. Well, that's it. I'm finished. I want out. You want out? What are you going to do without me, Jeff? Who's going to take you by the hand and tell you what to do? I got along before I married you. I'll manage again. Sure. You could manage to make a move without me. You'd be all right for about two days, and then you come crawling back with 
What'll I do, Nick? What'll I say, Nick? And when there's no Nick around... And when there's no Nick around to listen to your sorry little tales about how bad they treat you, and about how tough it is to be a big star. Well, whose shoulder you're gonna cry on then? Maybe I don't need his shoulder any longer, huh? You're gonna stand up to the world all by yourself? Well, oh, that's a, a joke, Jeff. That, that makes me laugh. You can't make it. I can make it. I can make it fine. And me? What about me? You? You make up fine. Like you say, you're the strong one. Look, the Anthony, I'll give you the house, the furniture, the car, the jewelry, the furs. I'll give you the money and the memories to live with. But me, I have to have more. <laughs> Look at you. You dramatize your own death scene. You got a scratch on the leg. You ought to know, Doctor. You're all ready to perform surgery on me. Don't know. What can we do here? Over. Nothing. Just keep me informed if there's any change. Over and out. What do you say? The doctor says we can't do anything. Just get him to the hospital as soon as we can. How far out are we now? I checked our position. About six hours. How long does the doctor give him? Not long, he says. If he doesn't get to a hospital soon. How's his leg? Well, the poison's moving up. You better hang on that radio. Right. Calling Papa A.K. Calling Papa A.K. Come in, Papa A.K. No, we're still three hours out. Over. What about the fever? Over. We can't keep it down. Over. Has the infection gotten any worse? Over. Yes, it's spreading up his leg. Over. <laughs> Get you fixed up. Did you reach Papa Eddie? Yes, they'll have an ambulance waiting when we dock. But we won't get there before dawn. How about him? I don't know. Hang on the radio. Ask him for instructions. Anything we can do here. I better get some more ice. Right. You could help. I don't think you would want me to. Do you only think about yourself? Don't try it. I'm not weak with fever. Help me, Adam. 
I need somebody to help me. And what about Jeff? You had him on a line, and now he's cut himself loose. You're a rotten fisherman, Nick. You wouldn't even haul him in. before we get there. It better be soon. Yes, we just saw the harbor lights. Over. When will you get here? Over. We'll be alongside in 20 minutes. Take him into surgery. How does it look, Doctor? Well, you've seen this kind of thing before, Adam. When we get in there, we'll have an idea if the infection can be arrested. Now, you'll have to sign these papers, Mrs. Hazen. What papers? Well, if we do find it necessary, we'll have to amputate his foot. We'll need your permission. Well, that's not fair. I mean, uh, it's, it's not up to me. You ask him. We've just given him sedation. He's in no state to be responsible for making that sort of decision. He won't amputate unless it makes the difference. Sign the paper. Thank you, Mrs. Hazen. This is your copy. They'll bring him down this hall. You can see him then. Thank you. You want to know if he's going to live, don't you? You care? Oh, yes. Yes, I care, Adam. I care very much. Now you're afraid. I'm not afraid. I've never been afraid of anything. No, of course not. You've always been like him, haven't you? What? Your father. You've always been like your father, and you've wanted every man you've ever met to be like him. Oh, have to listen to nonsense yes, you like do. this now? It's time somebody told you. Jeff's been trying to hand you the world, but the world as it is. That's not true. It isn't easy when people die, Nick, not people who you love. But you've got to face it. Your father's dead. He's not coming back. Got to try to stop making him live in somebody who's alive. Adam, please. Gotta grow up. Stop kidding yourself. You're just like Jeff. You're just like every other man I've ever known. My father was the only man who ever really loved me. Was he? Yes. And Jeff? How about Jeff? He doesn't want me. You heard him. I think he does. <laughs> I think he wants you too much. Nick, you're fighting too hard to make the dead live again. He loves you. I think somehow you love him. Now, Mrs. Hazen. like opening night. Listen, Jeff, your foot doesn't look too good. They won't know the score until they get you in surgery. Yes, keep going. Well, they might have to amputate. But they won't unless they absolutely have to. Man, how you talk. Listen, Jeff, everything's gonna be all right, see? 
Nicole. I, I wish things had turned out better. It's time now, Mr. Hazen. Just a minute, Doctor. Well, just one minute. Jeff, I'm, I'm going to be here waiting for you. I'll be right here. I'm sorry, Mrs. Hazen. Cover Mrs. Hazen in one piece. He's back in his room now, coming out of anesthesia. He keeps calling for Nick. Is there someone, uh, someone close to him called Nick? I don't know, Doctor. May I go into him now? Oh, of course. Did Mrs. Hazen leave that watch behind? She sure did. I don't think she'll be needing it anymore. In a moment, themes from the next Adventures in Paradise. Appearing with me in the next Adventures in Paradise will be guest stars Julie London and Thomas Gomez. I'll sail the Tiki from Honolulu to Manila, over 4,000 nautical miles, only to find myself unwelcome in a big way by a committee of black market boys and a beautiful nightclub singer. The show must go on Though you're a hard account If long overdrawn Just play the game again For your own sake, please go. I think it's too late. Adventures in Paradise, Mission to Manila, guest starring Julie London and Thomas Gomez. Yeah. 